Hello YouTube and Infinite Magic Ray players. So today we're going to bring a much requested video. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me if I was going to make a cloister video and I have been working very hard on putting together a solid strategy. Um, so first and foremost, I think that with Cloyster um, and the main, I guess, uh, reason for playing Cloyster being blessings, we need to talk about the blessings first. So when it comes to blessings, uh, as you can see, there are a ton of different blessings. There are, I think it was 42 that I counted. We can go real quick. One, two, three, four. 43 different blessings and not all of them are useful um and and even useful there are some that are better than others so like hp is useful hp rate is better speed is you know, great. Effect hit is great. Healing effect is decent for specific heroes. Freeze hit is decent for specific heroes. Stun hit is decent for specific heroes. Hypnotize hit is decent for one hero. Silence hit is decent for a couple of heroes. So like, some of these blessings are either so niche or just not usable at all that, um, it's important, it's important to play the cloister because you need to be acquiring as many of these buffs as possible so that way you can kind of, uh, I don't want to say counter the RNG because you are going to get wrecked on RNG because like I said, you've got a 1 in 43 chance to get a specific blessing. Like if you want speed, it's a very, very hard thing to get speed. And then two, um, when you're looking at these chests, the drop rates are abysmal. So you can't see what they are in these chests, but it's very safe to assume that they follow what the drop rates are inside of here. So you have a 1% chance of pulling an S rank on any given chest. You have a 5% chance of pulling an A rake on any given chest, 20% chance for B, 30% chance for C, and then Ds are generally trash. Mythic Ds are trash. I would not even equip a Mythic D. I wish that I could freaking, um, I wish that I could, like, craft them of some sorts, or re- I don't, I don't know. I wish I could get rid of my Ds, because they cost gems to remove the, uh, the Mythic and the Legendary, um, D ranks, so, um... With that said, with the drop rates being so abysmal, right, it is very important to take this content seriously and to push yourself further, and that is what I'm here to help you do today. Um, so, you know, this is, this is, a lot of people have been upset with Cloyster um, ever since it launched. There have been a lot of problems with it. There has been the alt farming. There has been, um... There has been the abysmal drop rates. There has been the overtuned enemies. There has been a number of things that people have just been ill about, and 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 for good reason. Like you shouldn't be able to jump into here. I mean, uh, the amount of alt farming that is going on is absolutely absurd. So if you're looking at, um, I don't think I can even. Yeah, I can't see because I have them equipped, but the, uh, where you see the average price here, there are some really good blessings where the average price is pretty close to the minimum price. Like that is how much alt trading is going on. And there is so much alt trading going on that you can jump into here. You can change the price to ascending and you can, you can, you know, sit here and you can sit here all day, just pressing refresh, right? Just looking for somebody that's doing an alt trade so you can try to snipe their blessing from them because there is somebody that's going to be doing it at almost any given time of the day. You don't know what the blessing might be. Um, more often than not, it's going to be a useful blessing. So you might sit here and attack rate and refresh it. You might sit here and crit rate and refresh it. You might sit here and crit damp. Oh, well. Um, you might sit here and crit damage and refresh it. I don't think I'm going to find one on camera. Um, but you can, you can sit here and try to snipe people who are freaking farming themselves on alt accounts and it's crazy it is a crazy freaking thing um that you can sit here and you can snipe people and i've done it too i've gotten several good snipes i've gotten um let's look see a freeze resistance 50 that's a that's a mythic a rank that i bought right there um these were these were epic a or epic a rank or s rank um epics that i bought uh 
Um, 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 this was a mythic A rank that I bought. This was a legend A rank that I bought. This was a, a like I've gotten some really good snipes here. Um, mythic A rank speed. Um, mythic A rank attack rate. Uh, like the fact that I can snipe people who are alt farming. It is crazy. This is a broken part of the content, but thankfully, 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 they are implementing a fix for this. Um, on Thursday, you will no longer be able to alt farm, which is great in my opinion. Now, you won't be able to snipe anymore. You won't be able to sit here and refresh the market all day looking for somebody who's alt farming so you can steal their blessing. And I know some people are upset about that, but it is better for the game as a whole that this alt farming thing comes to an end. It should have never have started. The, the balance is thrown off um, you know, tremendously from it, but it is what it is. Um, at this point, all we can do is try to improve and move forward um, and be thankful that it is coming to an end. So on Thursday of the upcoming week, they will launch a um, an update to where you like for example a let's look see for a D ranked epic the minimum buy it now price will be 600 now the bid can start at whatever it can be five um but the buy it now price will be set so absurdly high that it is not a um not a feasible thing to to alt farm you won't be able to you won't be able to sell yourself those blessings for next to nothing um so i think that's a very good update i'm very happy with it i know there will be a lot of people that have disagreeing opinions um but that's fine. Everybody can have their own opinion. That's that's not a, that's not a problem. But I think for the general health of the game, it's better for us not to be able to alt farm and not to be able to sign. Look at this bug. We can buy them with these uh, <laughs> those eggs. Anyways, um, so that's that's a whole never conversation. That's not the point of this video. But we did need to talk about buffs, um, blessings, why they're good, um, and why you should be pushing cloister. So for example, um. You know, people are getting faster and faster thanks to these blessings. I've got two mythic A rank speeds on my singer, and he's over 3,000 speed just as a base. Um, and I don't have the best speed rolls on him, like his artifact. You know, 94 is not the greatest. Um, this one's a pretty good one, 129. Um, speed at 97, like that's not over 100. Uh, this is just barely 100, and then this is actually a pretty decent speed piece too, but like I don't have the best speed rolls, and he's over 3,000. Um, and then my popper's almost 3,100, and he too, I think he's got a lot better speed gear on, 117, 110, uh, 132, 129, so he's got better speed rolls, um, 114, but because of his plus 53, plus 50, is it's made him a lot faster so um these these blessings are really good for making your hero stronger um looking at agatha now uh what, what do i have on her direct damage and yeah direct damage and uh crit damage so she's a lot stronger thanks to those blessings um my little jack's got uh attack rate and mastery um like they're they're some good blessings and they make my heroes significantly stronger and they will make your heroes significantly stronger. Um, so so farming blessings is going to be a very integral part of the game moving forward. You're going to want to be farming high and the reason why is that the drop rates are purely abysmal. Um, if you're farming say 20, you have a 0.2% chance of getting a mythic. So you have a 2% chance to get a mythic from your 100 weekly keys. Um, I, I think that's right. Yeah, yeah. So from your 100 weekly keys, you have a 2% chance of it being mythic if you're farming 20. So you do not want to get stuck at a low floor. The idea behind this is now that this is a marathon type content, you can't sit here and farm all blessings right on the first day um, and then try to push really hard throughout the week. You will marathon style this and you will you know, grab blessings over time. They are permanent now, so you won't have to worry about resetting blessings every single week, or I guess divine powers, I should be calling them. Um, you won't have to worry about your divine powers resetting every week and having to reform them. Um, what what kind of system we have now is, is when you beat a boss with a key in stock, you will get these divine power shards and you will get, um, you know, drop rate chance here. You will get some sort of chest. Uh, odds are it'll be one of these because uh, they, they have the highest drop rates, but it could be higher. Um, but the higher that you go in your farming, 
the lesser chance you have of pulling some some bad short, uh, bad chests and the higher chance you have of getting something good. So like even on 35, you get a 4% chance of getting a legend, almost 2% chance of a mythic. And then the um, the elite, I think it is, that, that one just dropped off the map altogether. Um, so you want to you want to be setting yourself up for the future. Um, and let's talk about the future. So right now, um, the boss, the floor 25 boss, it's a poison boss. So that is the gimmick. You need poisoners. Um, now, granted, you don't necessarily need poisoners until you get to difficulty 31 because the mechanic changes. So if you notice whenever you go into, and I, and I don't have a, a, I don't have a farm set up. Actually, you know what we can do is while we're talking about this, um, let's set, let us set a farm really quickly. We'll do 24 multi battles and hopefully push. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Let me try this one more time. Okay, well, I can't even do that. So, um, awesome. I think that this bug is pretty common. I think that what you need to do is like close out of the app and restart it. So, we'll we'll ignore that for now. Um, just know that the boss on floor twenty five, and I don't think I can even. Yeah, I can't even go in and look. Um, but the boss on floor twenty five is a poison boss, and essentially how it works is that in earlier floors they will start with one special stack of it's a special stack a special poison stack that they own that they carry that they start with and in owning said stack they increase their abilities their strength by a lot um and then the higher you go the more said stacks that they have so um they, they start with one, they go to two, then they increase to three, and then the highest that I've seen on floor 36, so I'm assuming that this carries up to floor 40, is four special stacks of this poison. Um, and the thing about floor 31 through 40 and carrying these four special stacks of poison is that while the boss has four stacks of this special poison, um, the boss will one-shot any, any character um, it, it will completely nuke through invincibility, um, immortality, um, any sort of defensive buff that you have, it will eat right through it and it will one shot you. Um, so, uh, it's important to play into the gimmicks, the higher up that you go. Um, and with that said, that and speed are going to be the two big inhibiting factors of whether or not you can push because... Um, I know a lot of people are mad about the buffs because they've decreased some. So when you're looking at the, uh, this, this comes to mind because I remember what these are. The mastery 20% here used to be mastery 50%. The effect hit 8% used to be effect hit 20%. Um, the thing about it is, is that these buffs, they are permanent. You will own them forever. And, uh, when you buy out the store, during the weekly reset, a new buff will take its place. So you can continue to stack buffs infinitely. If you can't clear floor 30 right now, you know, two or three weeks from now, after you've, you know, gathered enough buffs, maybe you can. If you can't clear, you know, the, the, the longer and longer that you play Cloister, the longer and longer that you utilize your 100 weekly keys and you buy bless or you buy divine powers and you, you know, grow this quote unquote uh, account or this this progress level in Cloister, the higher you'll be able to go and it is a snowballing effect. Um, when you're farming floor one, you will only get 10 divine power shards and then each additional following stage, it will increase by 10. So at floor 25, I was getting 250. At floor 30, you would get 300. At floor 35, you get 350, so on and so forth. You can do math. Um, so it's going to be important, like I said, to play this content. Don't slack in this content. Use your 100 keys. I don't even care if you're feeling lazy one week and you don't really feel like, uh, you know, because like floor 31, 32, 33, 34, for example, you'll have to manual fight the boss. Um, if, if you're feeling lazy, not up to it, then farm floor 30 because you'll be able to auto battle it, multi battle it, whatever. Just utilize those keys. Uh, acquire these divine power shards. 
um, and then purchase your buffs in the market um, because this is going to be how you move forward. You have to utilize all of these keys, you have to buy all the powers that you can, and every week you will get stronger and stronger and stronger, and that's why I think this update is so great. This is now... I want to say it's a content for everybody, but of course you're going to be inhibited by the speeds that you can maintain unless you can um, utilize certain gimmicks to get around it. Like, for example, Dakota does a revival, a Fiona does a revival, um, Space does a turn meter boost. Like, you have heroes that can work around some of the speeds, and then of course carrying enough poisoners, um, because that's what this specific rotation is, and, uh, you know, this is something that we'll get into when we start talking about buffs, but they, they, they will change over time. Um, don't be afraid though. Don't be afraid to buy the poison buffs because it will be a while. Um, but that's going to be what the limiting factors are. It's going to be speed or your avail your uh, uh, availability to use certain gimmicks if you can't make up the speed. So turn meter boost or revivals or um, simply having the hero. So if if you don't meet X Y Z criteria and you can't gimmick your way around it, that's going to be the only. Um, inhibitors but as far as strength goes as far as like surviving goes as far as dealing damage goes that's not going to be an issue so if you're a new account and you have like a poison team six months from now if it was still a poison rotation you would be able to farm pretty freaking high as long as you use all of your keys every week and you purchase divine powers and that's what i really like about this content because for me personally before before this update i could not for the life of me beat difficulty 36 that that 25th boss had like 10 billion hp um with 150 buffs and uh, you know the 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 stats that i carry on the back end the sanctuary the the talents um the gear all everything that i've got uh it wasn't enough i i just couldn't kill this boss uh, so, so I'm very excited that it now makes these later bosses that seemed impossible, it, it is doable now. Um, it's just not something that you start at the beginning of the week and you farm 150 blessings right out the gate and then spend all week trying to beat one stage. It, it's no longer that. It is a marathon type content. Um, and with that said too, with the fact that these are permanent buffs that you own forever, you will never have to worry about them resetting. Um, 440 doesn't seem like it's going to be the cap forever because at some point we will have lots of people farming floor four like just farming floor 40 from the amount of buffs that we've got um it could be that you run the boss team the poison team that you're going to use and you could clear all the waves with it you know i don't i don't really know um because there's no way to fathom what an infinite scaling buff cycle looks like you know it's it's infinite you can you can become infinitely powerful so uh, what we have to look forward to is the potential for future expansion of this content for difficulties 50 60 70 80 90 100 to uh, potentially appear and of course with those increasing difficulties better drop rates so that's why i am preaching right now any whales any krakens any mid-level any low-level players if you plan on playing this game and you plan on sticking around Please play your cloister because you will not regret it in the long run. Um, this is a long game that we're going to be playing now. Um, and, and it's all going to be based on using your keys, maximizing your divine power shards, and moving forward. Collecting buffs, getting stronger. That is going to be the key to this content. Um, so let's let's move into... Uh, what your weekly your this this right here um this is going to reset weekly i'm sure we all know that at this point you will you will guarantee yourself what is it two four six six hundred and eighty rainbow gems every week one of each of these chests every week and that is that is a solid guaranteed reward um so that in and of itself is pretty decent you know it's not the best rewards but it's it's, it's better than nothing um and you'll just get this passively through using your keys or there's no reason to like rush through it unless you just want to um this 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 will happen um and then whenever you beat any given stage every single boss within a difficulty um will carry the specific drop rates that are advertised here so let's say we're farming 28 right now and we're not we're we i don't know what we're farming yet because we we activated some powers um and we we did 25 because that's what we could without buffs um, we activated some powers and this is where we're at. We haven't, you know, felt out what we want to farm yet. Um, but say we're farming 28. Every single boss that we kill gives us a 1% chance of a mythic. So with 128 keys left, the odds are that we'll pull one mythic blessing 
from our farming. Um, the odds are is that we'll pull two or three legend blessings from our farming. Um, so, again, this is why it's so important to collect these blessings or these divine powers and move forward over time because you want to increase your chances of getting something useful. Because like, like I was saying in the beginning, these drop rates are abysmal. Um, you want to be moving forward so you can increase your chances of at, at getting something because, uh, is <laughs> is it is is really disheartening, I guess, to to find that you got a mythic chest and it be like a D rank damage reflect or HP burning damage reduction or whatever. Um, but that is your goal. Is we're playing this content, we're pushing forward. Um, and and every week you're getting stronger and moving forward and. Um, that's, that's essentially it. Uh, so divine powers, this has been a big question that people have been asking me, what divine powers do I buy? Uh, why do I buy them? What, what, what am I looking for? How do I, how do I do this? Um, so what you're going to start with, and this is what I think is the most important is you are going to take these activated divine powers of the session and you're going to bring them to 999 because these have unique buffs built within them. So the Oath of Defense has its own unique buffs, the Redemption, the Enlightenment, they all have their own unique buffs built within them. So you want to go ahead and get 999 of each. So that way you can maximize the, the passive buffs that you have in the background. Um, once, you, once you do that, we are on a poison rotation right now. So this is going to speak specifically towards players who are farming, say, or who are trying to push past 431, 32, etc. Um, or people who believe that they will be able to do so. Um, you're going to want to be looking at the, uh, the power of enlightenment buffs. And I made a short list of which, which buffs in each category are the best. Of course, I left off the, um, the, the, the IX here because it's only one copy of each and you will need this number nine buff in order to get number nine on everything. So it's kind of a given, you have to buy this buff, um, so that's not on the list of priorities. It's just something that you have to freaking do so that way you can uh, so, so you can get your activated powers. Um, but I have listed um, right here in front of me which ones are the most important. And some of this is going to tie into just the stats of the later game bosses. And we will go over those after we talk about the blessings that you want. So for poison, um, what we are looking at is all of them you're going to want every single one of these poison buffs because it's a poison rotation and i mentioned earlier that the rotations will change i asked jonas about this because i was concerned myself with us only being able to get say say i'm say a farm floor 30 right because it's a simple easy i don't have to worry about the boss floor for me um at 100 keys a week and 300 points per key that's 30,000 per week so i will be able to get the 10,000 um i will be able to get the six, 12, 18,000, that's 18,000 there, and then 5,000, 5,000, that's 10,000, so that's, uh, what is that, what is that, that's 28,000, I won't even be able to buy all of the, uh, all of the buffs for Power of Enlightenment, because I have to go through, and I have to get the level 9s and all the other things too, um, the, uh, well, actually I have to get level 9 in the Enlightenment and the Redemption, so, that's going to be my first priority. Like I said, get your level nines, get those passive activated buffs going. Um, and then I won't be able to buy out the store of the enlightenments. But um, I asked him because I was like, man, if I if I spend a couple of weeks, right, or even a month, and I'm farming this enlightenment and I get all of the buffs, uh, what happens? Like, what what if the modifier changes to HP burn or you know bleed or um, burn or whatever it may change to? And he reassured me, so I will just relay what I was told, is that you do not have to worry about this. It is several, several, several months out, so you've got time to form the poison buffs because they are going to help you beat the poison boss. Um, and what you don't have to worry about is these cards ever going away. So you will have these cards forever. These will always be buffs on your account. Um, I asked him about the activated uh, the activated buffs and what he had, what he had assured me. I'm just relaying um, the message here was that you you don't have to worry about losing your buffs. These these powers are something that you keep forever. So, um, with that said, do not feel bad about buying poison buffs because even though the rotation may change down the line, you will need poison buffs now in order to kill the boss. Um, so, 
For enlightenment, you're going to want every single one and you're gonna want the max quantity of all of them, but this is going to happen after you get your activated level nines. Um, so it may be next week that you, you end up getting this far depending on what floor you're farming. Um, so for redemption and for defense, we're gonna start with defense. I think that the highest value buffs are going to be, uh, you're gonna want V, uh, let's see, this is eight, seven. You're gonna want eight and seven like you want them but they're not top priority um something that you may want to max out would be number six here this is a very good buff uh number five not so much tenacity i, don't, I haven't found tenacity to be super useful in this content um the let's see the iv i don't have yeah i don't have this one marked uh this one is this one's a decent buff but it's not top priority because effect res is not something that you desperately need. Um, it will help you some because the boss does apply poison stacks to your to your team. So a total of forty percent effect res will will help you. Um, but it's not top priority. Um, Power of Defense 3, this is a very, very important buff. This is gonna be something that you want to max out. Um, 100% increasing the speed by 40 times 10 that's 400 speed um if the ally has any shield so it'll increase your speed by 400 if you have a shield this is going to be very very important um then you've got uh power of defense 2 this is going to be a good one to have because it increases your defensive stats and then power of defense 1 this is also one that you want to max out um the increasing your attack by five percent that's going to be huge well 50 percent because you know you, get, you can get quantity 10 this is going to be very huge for you so the the two biggest buffs in my opinion for power defense that you want to make sure that you max out is going to be power defense three and power defense one um and then when we're looking at redemption uh let's see d -d 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 -d, uh tenacity again i don't think is super super important for this content so you can probably skip over um maxing this one out um unless of course you eventually have nothing to spend on i don't know um but i would i, I don't think tenacity is super useful um the healed effect and the healing effect these are both going to be really useful buffs the reason being is that a lot of people are using santa to clear through the waves a lot of people are um using magdi on the boss wave so increasing your healing effect to increase your healing and increasing your healed effect to increase your healing while you're taking a lot of damage is going to be very useful for you um so these two are pretty important um i don't think that they are top priority but they are going to be useful um again effect res will be useful um this is not something that i think is top top priority but this is something that will be useful now if you notice we've got another speed buff this is going to be top top priority you're going to want to max this out 400 speed is very very important for moving forward so when the ally is being healed owning this card will increase the ally speed by 40 times 10 for two turns um so between the defensive and the redemption speed buffs you are going to be getting 800 speed increase um this these these speed increases make a huge difference not only are you going to have an 800 speed increase you're going to have speed up from santa if you're using santa or whatever other speed up here is you might have space for example um dakota for example so on and so forth you're getting speed up you'll be getting this passive speed from these two buffs and you'll be sometimes putting speed down. Like if you're using Santa, you're putting speed down on the waves. So you're going to be lapping and lapping and lapping and lapping these heroes, and you'll be able to, you'll be able to put them through hell. <laughs> so, so this is a very, very important one. Um, three is useful, uh, but not super top priority. This is something that you will buy, but it's not something you need to max out right away. Um, Power uh, Deep, uh, Redemption 2, this is also something that's useful, but you don't need to max it out right away. Um, things like this, they will help your sustainability. So if you're noticing that you're you're taking a bit more damage than you like, then you can go through and start to add a couple of these buffs to your, to your, um, to your repertoire. But against the final boss, I don't think that defense is super, super useful. More so you're looking at shielding and shield effect. Um, because the the boss is a dot or she's putting poison sex on you so defense uh poison kind of ignores that so this is more so for like the gretas the aerials the the direct damagers that you might run into during the waves um and that you know if you're struggling with waves something like this will help you but again not top top priority this is something that you kind of buy as you want um 
but power of redemption one which is increases your attack this is going to be top top priority again on the 36 or 37 boss that i was fighting they had 10 billion hp so even with all the max buffs that i had at the time i was not dealing enough damage to kill the boss so having having all of the attack and all of the speed buffs that are in this content um purchasing all of them all the time maxing them out that is going to be integral to your success and then right now with it being a poison rotation you're going to want to buy all of the poison buffs do not skip over a single one of them every single one of them will be useful because you're using poison so inflicting poison increase healed effect no brainer increase effect hit no brainer increase mastery no brainer increase poison damage no brainer this one you have to buy to get the activated so don't even need to think about it um the you know the speed up for inflicting poison no brainer the max HP for inflicting poison, no brainer. The max attack for inflicting poison, no brainer. All of these poison buffs, like I said, you need to buy every single one of them and you need to max it out. And that brings me to my next point. So I asked, I asked Jonas, um, I said, hey man, so uh, I noticed that, and you know, what comes to mind is this one right here and this one right here, where it's mastery 20% and effect hit 8%. This used to be effect hit 20% and mastery 50%. And I asked and um, said that, you know, these buffs are significantly weaker than before. What happens when you max them out? So you buy three mastery this week. Um, you can't buy any more. Uh, well, what, what do you do then? Um, and what he had explained to me, is, and I, I, I don't quite fully understand exactly how this mechanic is going to work. I have a pretty good idea. But he said that this buff gets replaced. So you max something out, and then next week when you go into the shop, you won't be able to buy Master 20% anymore. It'll be something different in its place. So I don't know what something different will be, but you can rest assured that in buying these buffs, even though they are weaker, over time, as you max them out, they get replaced with new things, and that will make up for the nerfed effects that we're experiencing. So we won't get 150% from Power Enlightenment 7 anymore. We will get 60%, but maybe, and I, and I don't know if it'll be, you know, renamed or replaced with something that's named Power Enlightenment 7. I don't know. Um, I just know that something takes its place once you've maxed it out. So all of these number 10s that you buy to get your activated um, number 9 buff, they will all be replaced with something else. Um, like I said, I don't know what it's going to be, but it will be something. And because we keep these buffs forever, it is it is a good thing. It is a good thing. Sure, we don't get 150% from those three mastery buffs, but we get 60%. It's something. We get it forever. We don't ever have to worry about getting that buff again, and something will take its place. Maybe it's another mastery buff. What if it's mastery 25? What if it's... Uh, uh, another increased poison like you don't know what it might be um they, they but they will replace them with something different you will always have something to buy in the shop and you will always own it forever so over time all of these buffs are going to help you and help you and help you they won't hurt you um but i i went through i told you guys what i think are the ones that you're going to want to max out right away i told you which ones i think are going to be useful um and i told you which ones are you know top top priority which ones are priority so on and so forth so that's what i think about the buffs that you're going to buy um, again, your first step should be activating all three powers. You want to activate enlightenment, you want to activate defense, and you want to activate redemption. I started with defense because I have enough damage to get through the waves. I just needed a bit more survivability to um, increase the success of my multi-battles. Um, I think that the goal for everyone should be to start with defense nine and then go to six or three, three, and then six, six, and then nine, nine. Um, like I said, go ahead and get nine everywhere and then start stacking your poison buffs. I think that the poison buffs are gonna be, um, well, you're gonna wanna start with the uh, the speed buffs and the poison buffs. Um, so we're looking at, once you've got your 999, you're looking at these three buffs right here, enlightenment six, seven, and eight. These are gonna be top, top priority. You're looking at uh, speed. This is gonna be top, top priority and you're looking at the two speeds for redemption and defense. Those are gonna to be top, top priority. Um, so you're you're working towards increasing your speeds, increasing your damage, um, and those are gonna be your top, top priorities. And then you're gonna fill in with defensive stats such as max HP increases, shield effect increases, um, healing effect increases, things like that. They're gonna be kind of like third on your priority list. So damage is gonna be 
you know, one of the number one priorities. And and I can't really rank damage or speed higher. Um, they're both super, super important. Um, so they're going to both be kind of hand in hand, super important. The next one's going to be your, your HP cap increases. You're going to be looking for that because, like I said, the boss is DOT, so he doesn't care about your um, defensive stats. Uh, like defense in particular is what I mean by that. Um, but your shield effect and your um, your HP cap increases, that's going to be what helps you survive through uh, DOT nukes. Um, and then you're going to be, after the fact, looking at, you know, other other type of defensive stats, healing effects. Um, you know, sh uh, healing effect in particular, uh, defense if you need some more help throughout the waves, so on and so forth. But again, this is a permanent, permanent buff solution. So it's okay if you make some mistakes in the the order i guess there i mean i don't even think that you can make mistakes in the order because you'll own them forever um i will say that if you're going for a specific buff it might make good sense to go ahead and max it out so that way you can replace said buff with a new buff and then you know in 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 the sense of maxing out buffs right um say i buy all three of these all three of these and all three of these what that has done instead of buying one 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 is I know what the one 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 um, I know what two two uh, like I know what buffs are going to be available in these three slots next week. Whereas if I bought all three of them, I grant myself an opening for three new buffs that I don't know what they are, and they could be way better than some other buffs that I was considering. So, the good buffs like these three, like your speed buffs, you're going to want to max them out because that opens up a slot for a new buff to come in. And it's very possible that when you look at this new buff that it could be better than another buff that you were considering. So so when there are good buffs, very good buffs, like Mastery 20, Poison Damage 15, Effect Hit 8, max them out, the speed ones, max them out. So that way you can open up room for new buffs and sort of evaluate them and decide what's going to be better for you. Um, because it could be, like I said, I, I, I don't necessarily want to do, uh, uh, I don't want to do, I don't want to do... Tenacity 6 if I have a speed buff or a mastery buff up. You see what I'm saying here? Um, it's going to be very important to max out the good buffs so that way you can make room for new buffs. And that is, you know, not a not so quick recap on what to do in Cloyster. Um, I tried to be very thorough, but since it is an infinite, endless content, is an endless Cloyster, um, it's it's hard to say that, that there's a specific order aside from you know entry level uh getting your snowball started what to do um and with there being as much content as there is i feel like i may have missed a few things um so what i would like for you to do if you've made it this far and you've listened through my rambling you've listened through you know like what i think you're going to do to move forward and to you know be successful in this content um leave a comment if you have any specific questions please leave a comment regarding you know what we've done here and i will uh you know thoroughly review all of the comments if you have a specific question um i will answer it uh it very well may be that you have a question to to ask that i haven't you know covered yet and it's very uh <laughs> i mean with as much content uh, you know we've got 43 different blessings we've got 40 different difficulties um Every 10 difficulties, let's see, 10, 20, 30. Yeah, every 10 difficulties, the boss introduces a new mechanic. Like, there are so many different things in Endless Cloister to cover that one video is just not enough to, to cover it all. Um, so, please, if you have questions, I'm here to help. I'm here to, um, you know, my, my main goal since starting this channel has been for to put out knowledge, to put out tips and tricks, to help people do better, score better, get better rewards. Um, we're, we're all playing this game together, and we're all trying to do the best we can. And that is what I'm here for, is to try and help everybody do better. Um, I want everybody to be, you know, progressing their account and satisfied with their progress. I want, you know, that's that's what I want, and that's what makes me happy is when people, you know, message me and say, hey man, you know, that that that, you know, my my damage on my little jack team has gone up so much since watching your video. Things like that I live for. You know, it makes me really feel really really good. So please please do not hesitate to ask any questions. I'm here to answer them. Um, I know that I've got to have missed something, but. Um, again, if you made it this far, thank you for hanging out. Thank you for stopping by, and I hope we'll catch you on the next one. Um, and yeah, peace out. Till next time.